Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Industrial Coding and Lining Application Specialist Qualification and Certification. We're glad that you're joining us. My name is Josiah Lockley, and I am with JPCL and Paint Square. It's my pleasure to be the moderator for today's webinar. This webinar is organized by SSPC, the Society for Protective Coatings, and JPCL, the Journal of Protective Coatings and Linings. This webinar is part of our 2017 SSPC JPCL webinar series. You can find more info about the rest of the schedule by visiting www.paintsquare.com slash webinars. Now, before we begin, let's take a few moments to talk about the format for today's webinar. The presentation by Jeff Theo of Vulcan Painters will be lecture style and last about 45 minutes. This will be followed by a 10-minute question and answer session. There you'll have the opportunity to submit questions via the questions chat box, which is part of your GoToWebinar control panel that you should see on the right-hand side of your screen. If you have any technical questions or issues that pop up, you can use that questions chat box to send questions over to me, and I'll do the best I can to address them if anything comes up. For those of you who receive uh, continuing education credits from SSPC, a test is available after the webinar. The cost of the test service is $25. You can register through the SSPC Marketplace by visiting www.sspc.org slash marketplace. SSPC is also an accredited training provider for the Florida Board of Professional Engineers. If you're interested, you can download and submit the FBPE form along with the completed exam from sspc.org slash marketplace. We will repeat this information at the end of the webinar and in a follow-up email. Please keep in mind that today's presentation is being recorded and will be made available by the end of the day today at paintsquare.com slash webinars. A copy of the slides are also currently available at paintsquare.com slash webinars. Just uh, go to that address click on the title of today's webinar, which you should see on the screen right now, and you'll see a link that says Presentation Slides. Just click there and you can follow along with a copy of the slides. I would expect to see uh, a recording um, posted by the end of the day today, roughly around 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, all that information can be found by visiting paintsquare.com slash webinars. <clears throat> now before I turn the uh, presentation over to Jeff, I'd like to introduce him. So, Jeff is the Vice President of Business Development for Vulcan Painters Incorporated. He has over 38 years experience in project management, sales, marketing, and business management in the coatings industry. His tenure includes employment by painting contractors and coatings manufacturers. He is a past president of SSPC, the Society for Protective Coatings, and served on their Board of Governors from 1999 to 2009. He currently chairs the Power Tool Cleaning and Commercial Contractor Certification Subcommittees. He also serves on the Standards Review Board. He is an SSPC Protective Coding Specialist and an experienced technical speaker with several published articles. He also serves on the Board of Directors of the International Concrete Repair Institute, Gulf South Chapter, and was President of the Coding Society of the Houston area in 1987. Jeff holds a Bachelor of Science in Business from the University of the State of New York and an Associate's Degree in Architecture Construction Technology from the New York Institute of Technology. Now, at this point, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Jeff. Thank you, Josiah. And every, I'm assuming you can see my screen at this time? Yes, absolutely. Take it away, Jeff. Great. Today we're going to talk about industrial coding and lining application specialist qualification and certification, which is the joint standard SSPC ACS1 NACE number 13. This is a joint standard which was originally published in January of 2008 with the most recent update coming in March of 2016. And this standard sets forth the requirements for qualification and certifications for an application specialist. It is not the minimum standards for a, for, for a painter. Uh, it is more of a, an advanced qualification, and it deals mainly with the industrial markets, 
does not have to, anything to do with residential, architectural, or commercial painting. An application specialist is defined as somebody who engages in surface preparation and application of protective coatings and linings. The standard is broken into uh, several components. The body of the standard, which provides the requirements for qualification and certification as a specialist, and then a number of appendices. Some are mandatory and others are non-mandatory. Appendix A, which is mandatory, defines the competency requirements of the minimum or the minimum body of knowledge for each of the different qualification levels. There are three levels of qualification in this standard. Appendix B, also mandatory, describes the level of competency required on each qualification level. The first non-mandatory appendix is C, which provides information on desirable workplace skills. And finally, Appendix D is a list of acceptable ongoing training and continuing education programs. This standard is a stepwise achievement process. It's designed to go through different levels, starting at level one, continuing on to level two, and finally on to level three. At each level, it includes all aspects of surface preparation and coating application, primarily for steel and concrete industrial structures. The interested person, persons in, uh, for this standard would include personnel involved in developing education and certification programs, whether in-house or uh, offered by third-party agencies for training skills and knowledge of application specialists, for assessing programs available in the open market or developing an in-house source, or those involved in validating a candidate's knowledge and skills based on qualification in a certification program operated under this standard, kind of like a work, worker workforce development workforce assessment program. There were some major revisions to ACS-1 in the 2016 revision. The first, the first of the, the revisions was a clarification of the language requirements for evaluation of craft worker. Originally, the 2008 version said that the testing and the program had to be de developed in English, and English was a, re uh, a reading and writing requirement. That has been changed. There was also changes in requirements for the amount of work experience and training, and the body of knowledge requirements were greatly simplified from six areas down to three. The three qualification levels for specialists, level one is a basic knowledge of industrial coatings, linings, and safety. Level two is a more detailed knowledge and skills relevant to industrial coatings and linings. And level three, which used to be for supervisors, uh, is, is more specialized applications. And so there's a specialty endorsement, which is detailed knowledge and skills of specialty areas that we'll look at in another table in a minute. And so the level three is actually attaining the level two plus three or more specialty endorsements. Level one qualification is intended for entry-level applicators with limited relevant work experience. These individuals will to be either working with or under the supervision of level two or level three application specialists. It is not intended for level one people to have the skills and knowledge to work alone, unsupervised. The qualification requirements for level one include successful completion of a skills assessment program and completion of examinations on the body of knowledge and the ability to successfully demonstrate the ability to read, comprehend, and communicate in the language agreed upon by contracting parties. Level two 
is intended for more experienced specialists with at least a moderate skill level. The intent here is a level two should be able to work independently while performing surface preparation and coding application work. The revision change in 2016 put the minimum of 3,000 hours of relevant work experience on a level two with a minimum of 450 documented hours of craft worker training of training through the same period of time, or a minimum of six years of relevant work experience with no documented training. In order to attain level two, there has to be successful completion of all level one requirements and the completion of the level two examination. For those of you who are familiar with SSPC's CAS program, there is currently an interim level two. Um, I have to stress here that CAS is SSPC's program uh, to uh, test and certify people to this standard. The standard does not have any interim level two uh, qualification levels in it. So uh, there, is, there is a differentiation between CAS and the ACS 1 NACE 13 standard. The endorsement level that was added in, in 2016 has the same definition and requirements as level two with a minimum of one of the following specialties. Concrete coatings, water jetting, including high pressure and ultra high pressure water jetting, electrostatic spraying, plural component spray, powder coating processes, specialty pipeline coating installations, and thermal spray coating processes. For all of the add-on or specialty endorsements, there is both a written and practical examination. In the specialty for coating of concrete, we're going to look at the properties of concrete, understand the different concrete substrates, including gunite, poured concrete, concrete masonry units, and other types of concrete blocks. We're going to talk about surface preparation, application, inspecting and testing, and documentation. For the specialty under water jetting is equipment safety devices, personal protective equipment, equipment setup, equipment operation and maintenance as well as different degrees of surface preparation. For electric static spray equipment, safety, personal protective equipment, application equipment, application techniques, including thinning and coating selection, and troubleshooting. On the setup and use of plural component spray equipment, safety, personal protective equipment, the actual plural component spray equipment, application of various materials, and troubleshooting and repairs. Under the specialty of powder coatings, be safety, protective, personal protective equipment, materials, types of setup of the equipment, curing, inspection, and testing. Under the thermal spray equipment, there is safety, PPE, different materials, sealer coats, surface preparation, application methods, various types of equipment, equipment selection, process and work instructions, testing of the finished thermal spray coating, and documentation. Under the installation of specialty pipeline coatings, this can be for either the interior or the exterior of immersed, submerged, buried, and uh, surface pipelines, safety, personal protective equipment, materials, various installation methods, 
and the various surface preparation application uh, equipment and then selection set up and operation along with cure inspection and documentation so the level three qualification now that used to be for foreman or supervisory people is intended for application specialists with advanced knowledge of coatings and linings. It requires the level two plus completion of three and more endorsements. It requires eight years of relevant work experience and the skills are required to evaluate and synthesize as demonstrated by the ability to make plans and sound judgments. You have to successfully complete all of the level three examinations for the at three minimum that you have selected, and that includes written and practical examinations. Now, anybody that provides programs that are to meet this ACS1 NACE 13 standard uh, shall be developed and operated in accordance with ISO 17024. 17024 contains principles and requirements for a body certifying persons against specific requirements and includes the development and maintenance of a certification scheme for persons. The certification exam shall be based on the competency requirements in the body of knowledge. Practical exams for level two require the candidate to prepare and coat a test panel. The test panel includes various common industrial structural members affixed, welded to a uh, metal plate. And so sometimes you have to spray inside of a pipe spool that is welded to it, uh, stripe coating, uh, turning uh, nozzles and spray guns at various angles, not necessarily just a, a perpendicular angle uh, to achieve a uh, defect-free coating. During the test, uh, the proctor or the, uh, the test judge will be looking at the different planning steps and procedures uh, prior to setup of the equipment. Uh, they're going to observe startup and start of ab abrasive blasting equipment, um, abrasive blasting the test panel or the test pa apparatus to a specific level of cleanliness and surface profile, and then assess, measure, and document the specified surface preparation. The requirements for maintaining a qualification Certifications shall be valid for no more than three years. And during the three years, the certification shall be maintained by one of the following methods. First, either completion of a minimum of 24 hours per year of relevant training and 500 hours per year of relevant work experience, or completion of the recompletion of the qualification exams and 500 hours per year of relevant work experience. We're seeing a lot of people uh, finishing up their first three years have not continues with their relevant training. And those who have not had the 24 hours per year of relevant training are going to have to retake the exams plus maintain the 500 hours per year of relevant work experience. Appendix A of the Biology of Knowledge defines the competency requirements or the minimum body for each of the qualification levels. We had originally six different competency requirement designations, N1 through N6, which has been reduced down to three, CR1, CR2, and CR3. CR1 through CR3 indicates levels of competency and various psychomotor skills. So our competency now is competency requirements have a CR designation and they explain the knowledge and skill requirement for each of the three levels of competency. We have 
both cognitive and psychomotor domains in our levels of competency. Or CR1, the lowest level of competency, cognitive is possessing knowledge and be able to demonstrate comprehension. And what we're looking for is the, the psychomotor for that is the ability to imitate a mentor's activity is developed and develop, developing the ability to manipulate after following instructions. An example of this would be hold your spray gun perpendicular to the surface at 8 to 12 inches and show me how to uh, crisscross a coating pass. Competency two is the ability to apply knowledge and demonstrate the ability to analyze. In that, you're going to be developing precision and consistency articulation, minimizing rework. Here, the psychomotor instruction could be, show me the proper way to coat this piece. In level three, the highest level is evaluate and synthesize. For example, make judgments, necessary adjustments and plans, and actions are naturalized and second nature that require uh, forethought. Um, this would be just your actions are natural, second nature, um, reactionary, no thought going into how, it, how it's done. It just comes natural. We mentioned very various courses that are relevant or acceptable to the continuing education requirement of 24 hours per year. This is just a brief uh, number of, of items that are relevant and acceptable uh, training, uh, brace of blasting programs, uh, various industry specific specialist programs, uh, formal applicator training, uh, advanced train the trainer, uh, different substrates, floors, uh, different equipment. The other standards relevant to ACS-1 where they actually have uh, Warcraft worker assessment and other uh, certified skill levels requirements in the standard are the SSPC, uh, PCCP programs, QP-1, for complex industrial structures, SSPC QP3 for shop applications, SSPC QP6 for thermal spray, and SSPC QP8 for polymer coatings on concrete substrates. All of these have applicator requirements uh, tied to the contractor certification. So that's a uh, uh, important for people that hold these different uh, contractor certifications. With that, I'm going to open it up to any questions. Okay, thanks so much, Jeff. Um, at this point, uh, we're going to open up the floor for questions. I encourage everybody to send questions over via their uh, questions chat box that you can see on the right-hand side of your screen. We'll select uh, questions allowed for Jeff to answer. Um, Content and time restraints may prevent us from answering every single question that is asked today, but we do log the questions and uh, we can follow up afterwards uh, in the weeks to come. So with that in mind, let's get going here. Um, one, one question I, um, I do get every webinar, and I figured I'll just uh, come out ahead of it first, is, is, uh, is there access to the slides? Is there access to a recording of the webinar? And the answer is yes to both. Um, we record we, re we record every webinar and we post it at uh, paintsquare.com slash webinars um, and you should expect to see the recording posted by around the end of the day today and by the end of the day I mean sometime around five o'clock Eastern time uh, if you'd like a copy of today's slides uh, they are currently available at paintsquare.com slash webinars all you have to do is go to that page and click on the title of today's webinar, Industrial Coding and Lining Application Specialist Qualification and Certification, and you can access these slides right there. You'll see a link at the bottom of the description of that webinar, and it'll say Presentation Slides, and it is in a PowerPoint format. So with that in mind, let's uh, 
let's access some of these questions here. Um, is there a field demonstration of proficiency for certification? The field, there is no current field proficiency demonstration. Uh, the the uh, actual uh, practical examination is a panel test uh, based off of an ASTM standard test panel. Uh, there's a number of bolts, angles, plates, structural members connected to a 4x6 or 6x6 steel panel. Okay. Um, is it possible for somebody to substitute years of experience for certification in lieu of the written test? Uh, no. Every, every, every level of certification has certain requirement tests. Now, the training in advance, they may want to not have any training going in and say, I would like to just test out. So a level one, uh, which is entry level, really, anybody can take the test for that. If they have the years of experience, the uh, six-year requirement for level two, they can um, take the written and practical uh, for, uh, for that level uh, without going through any training. Okay. Level three specialties, it requires eight years, eight years to get to level three. And again, they can also test out, but uh, is a written and practical exam tied to both level two and level three. All right, very good. Um, there is, uh, here's another one that came in here. I believe you might have, uh, you touched on it briefly in some capacity. Do supervisory personnel need to be certified as well? It depends. Uh, SSPC QP1 has a requirement for the number of uh, uh, certified uh, persons, certified applicators related to the uh, total crew size on it. And um, I don't have that exact percentage in front of me. I believe it is, it is a blend of uh, level ones and level twos. As I mentioned earlier, they also have an interim level two in SSPC's CAST program that is accepted, uh, but there is a minimum num uh, ratio requirement to certified individuals. Okay. Um, now, this is a twofold question that our um, speaker, or our, not our speaker, one of our attendees is asking here. Um, first, the first part is, what is craft training? And the second question is, can you go into a little more, um, uh, can you be a little more specific when you mean body of knowledge? Sure. Craft, craft training is basically safety and skills that is relevant to industrial surface preparation and application. Uh, it is not necessarily, let's say, blueprint reading or fall protection or, uh, or general safety that might be encompassing through an OSHA 10 or, or other uh, uh, mandatory requirements. It is, it is trade-specific. Uh, trading. And um, um, the body of knowledge, the body of knowledge sets the minimum requirements at the different uh, competency requirement levels for uh, the skills and knowledge that people have to hold. Uh, uh, the, they have to be trained and, and show competency in all of the items in the uh, body of knowledge. It goes in, it's pretty in-depth. Okay, we have a couple more questions in here. Uh, before we go uh, and ask some more questions, uh, some other things I just want to let everybody be aware of. Uh, some upcoming webinars that we have uh, next week, May 3rd, Navigating Today's Wet and Vapor Abrasive Blasting Technologies. May 17th, Personal Protective Equipment for Abrasive Blasting. June 14th, and I know we talked about this very briefly today, SSPC trained the train the painter, what is it? Um, June 21st, condition assessment, evaluation, and solution. And July 19th, using SSPC PA2 effectively. Uh, we have some more coming up as well, and we're always constantly updating uh, new webinars that we that will be coming down the pike. So again, I would encourage everybody to visit paintsquare.com slash webinars. Um, some final questions here. We have, let's just take a moment to bring these up. How can I get a copy of the standard SSPC ACS-1? 
the standard is available for uh, download from either sspc.org or nace.org. Uh, I believe if you're a member from either of those organizations, they are offered at no charge to members. Okay, um, here, here's one that just came in here asking, um, uh, I, this, it's not so much a question as they just want to double check and confirm this. Uh, this this person saying, I understand that the Train the Painter program meets SSPC ACS1 NACE 13 standards. Is this correct? Uh, the curriculum for Train the Painter uh, uh, does meet that standard. That is correct. Okay. Um, same person is also asking, uh, are there training centers in the, in, in the United States as well as Canada? Uh, yes, there are. I would contact SSPC or uh, NACE uh, or where you can get it. The, the advantage of the Train the Painter uh, program is it allows uh, contractors and other organizations to provide their own training. Uh, the, the thing was, after the training is complete, they would have to go to the, uh, uh, the body organization, in this case SSPC and NACE currently, and, and, and get the proctored exams from them. Uh, the train the painter will not allow the, uh, the, uh, the, the exams to be given by the trainers. Okay. Is there a standard that qualifies QC or QA to inspect certain coding projects? Uh, there are inspector requirements, there are some ASTM requirements, but the actual whole point inspections and which ones are required on a specific job, uh, they're, they're, unfortunately there is not. They are kind of grouped by the different whole points based on the surface preparation and application. Okay. Um, now, we do have a handful more questions coming in. I also want to encourage everybody to continue sending questions over before we wrap up today. Uh, some other webinars that have just uh, finished uh, last week, we did a webinar called Service Environment, What Coding Should I Use? Um, that took place on Wednesday, April 19th. The slides and the recording for that webinar are available. And uh, April 5th, we had a webinar titled Inspection of Thermal Spray Coatings. Again, if you'd like to access either of those two webinars, uh, feel free to access by going to SS, or excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm getting all my websites mixed up here, paintsquare.com slash webinars. Click on the title of the webinar to view the recording of those webinars. Um, let's see here. Um, the, this this person here is just uh, talking about inter, uh, international training uh, in different countries, specifically. Uh, and I'm, there's a, I think there might be a slight uh, translation barrier here. Um, and he, he has just questions in regards to uh, actual training in the country of Egypt. Anything you can uh, touch with that, Jeff? I I am not sure if. Uh if the SSPC international chapters, I know some of them that are doing uh, training. Unfortunately, I'm not sure if Egypt is uh, is not. I would contact your uh, your local chapter uh, and or SSPC office uh, and uh, and find out from them. And I'm just going to just send a, a quick message over with the SSPC site for our. Uh, um, attendee here who just asked that and so keep an eye out for that and uh, two more questions that have come in here isn't certi certification level three for supervisors and foremen uh, no that was in the original standard developed in 2008 the two, 2016 uh, eliminated all supervisor and foreman uh, requirements and made it for uh, specialty endorsements okay um, can you go? Can you go into more detail about the difference between um, SSPC CAS and this standard? Sure. SSPC's CAS is a program to get people certified to this standard. Um, SSPC CAS is to meet the requirements put together in the joint standard. So there, there, there can be a number of bodies that. Uh, 
that train and certify to this standard. Uh, so one is the standard and one is the program that gets you certified. All right, fantastic. Okay, well, with that in mind, it uh, looks like uh, we're, we're done with the Q&A portion for today. Uh, I would still encourage everybody to send over, wait, oh wait, hold on. Just got another one here, just about to wrap up here. Um, hmm. Let's see here. This is, this is an interesting one, and I leave it up to you how you want to decide to answer this here. Um, will this certification requirement cause the cost of painting jobs to increase due to uh, higher priced labor? I don't believe it will, it will uh, raise the higher price of labor. The big advantage and the goal of this is to put quality at the end of the spray gun, the end of the knowledge. In overall painting costs, they should come down. Uh, we should see rework or corrections um, greatly reduced by having a trained and skilled workforce out there. Uh, on the other hand, the value of a painter with a certification, um, I, would, I would take this as a, a, a certificate program. Uh, it would be the same as anything else. It demonstrates competency and skill, and there's value in that. So the individual uh, skills go up. Um, uh, all painters are not created equal. Um, they produce quality and uh, quantities at various levels. So I would expect uh, programs like ACS to uh, uh, generate a higher, higher skilled, more productive painter actually a safe worker so overall the cost of painting should come down all right great so that that concludes the Q&A session for uh, today's webinar but before we wrap up there are uh, some final topics I do want to discuss with you guys uh, so with that in mind as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of the webinar and during the um, during the Q&A as well uh, a copy of the slides will be are currently available at paintsquare.com slash webinars. Uh, today's presentation is being recorded and will soon be made available for replay through the Paint Square webinar archives. Um, please give us up to four hours to get the recording posted and ready for replay. You'll be able to find that information at, again, paintsquare.com slash webinars. Um, one other thing to point out as well, um, you may choose to register and complete a short test through the SSPC marketplace to earn continuing education units. In fact, let me just go back to that slide here for you. Um, cost of the test is $25, but can be found at sspc.org slash marketplace. Upon completion of the test, you may earn one continuing education credit from SSPC or from the Florida Board of Professional Engineers. If you're not already receiving the Paint Square News daily e-newsletter, we encourage you to sign up at paintsquare.com slash PSN. You'll see top headlines of protective and marine coatings, as well as industry news, uh, selected features from JPCL, and other online features like problem-solving forums, daily coding quizzes, and weekly polls. Finally, on behalf of SSPC and JPCL, I'd like to thank Jeff Theo for a very interesting and informative educational presentation. And of course, I want to thank all of you attendees for joining us today. We do look forward to presenting more webinars that will be educational and useful in your work. This concludes today's webinar. Have a great day, everyone.